right, we're back in Santorini, and now I am going to do the windmill. I had originally drawn my oval for the blades, and I came back in and painted my sky and left my drawing there. But as I got to looking at my reference material, this, I'm not sure what you call it, but this brace that comes out that holds the actual blades of the windmill, it extends out. And in my reference picture, it was, it looked like it was part of the blades. So I'm going to make my oval a little bit smaller. So what I've done is I've drawn that into the, into my wet paint and I'm going to head, go ahead and just kind of paint my sky over that other oval that I had drawn in originally. I used my original oval to help make my, my second one. And I got it up there before I said, you know, I thought, Mickey, you should have shown that on the video, but I forgot. So anyway, I'm going to paint out that other oval. Again, I've saved my background, my paint. I always mix more than I think I'm going to need because then I can I save it and I can come back and then if I need to make any um, if I make any mistakes and need to paint something over I can. Again, I'm going to do the same thing down here in the mountain. Just paint over that. And now I'm going to go ahead and bring that oval down. I'm doing this with a thin mixture of my mud, which is alizarin crimson plus ultramarine blue. It's two parts ultramarine blue to one part alizarin crimson, and then I've mixed liquid in it to thin it. So I just go ahead and you can see where this oval would just come on around. Okay, now I'm going to make that original, the, um, I have to look up on Google the parts of, a, of these windmills, but I'm going to put this. Again, I left my drawing there so I'd have that to follow along. And then this big gear, this is what runs the, the mill inside. And I'm just using my mud and liquid. This again, I don't put a whole lot of detail in that it's because it's really just silhouetted against the sky. And let me get a little bit finer brush here. Let's see what I want. I keep my fine brushes in a separate place from my my others. That way it's it's easier to they don't the bigger brushes don't hit against them and ruin the points. So this is a little bit finer, makes a finer line. And it's very easy then to drag these lines into that wet paint of the sky. If I were to try to do this after the sky was dry, it would be very, very difficult to do. Okay. Okay, now I mentioned earlier I like to use round brushes too for some of the detail, and this is a round. And again, this is a sable. Synthetic sable, and I just makes pulls a nice line into the paint, and then I just start bringing these to the center here, and they kind of crisscross. And they go. See how I can just pull that into the wet paint of the sky. And I come about the same distance around. And the, they're not straight, they're kind of curved.
actually those are, I don't know my reference, they really do kind of come across like that. Um, they appear to get smaller up here. And there we go, there's our windmill. The blades, it's amazing, they don't look like they catch much wind, but they really, really do. And then on the peak of this, this roof is a little cone, has a cone head. What I'm going to do is, now there's lines also that Look at my reference material. There's there's lines that then come from the this out to my out to each of these kind of interesting how that does. And it's very easy to pull those into the now the ones in the back I'm not going to really accentuate very much. They're just little lines. And then I'll just make these a little bit. If this windmill were further away, I wouldn't even worry about those, but it's, it's close enough that we would see them. And then I just pull these, I'm gonna make these a little bit thicker. And I just pull these then back over where those lines broke into them. They're probably guy wires or something like that. And these light, these are a little bit thicker at the end, right here toward the center. I have to Google and see what all these parts are called. Um, the anatomy of a windmill. Being a medical illustrator is just fascinating to me, knowing the names of parts of technical names and things. Just one of those interesting little things. Okay, and there is our windmill. I'm going to let a little light, just a little warmth, hit along this and the blade right there. And the end of this also will get a little bit of a light hitting on it right there. And these foreground blades will also get a little tip. Just the ones that are closest to us. Right. There is our windmill. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more of this water as we come forward. Now I've used a mixture of my white plus the mud plus a little bit of ultramarine blue in here. This mixture is a little more ultramarine blue and the water gets darker as it comes forward. It's almost like there's reefs and things out there. But the water comes in here. And starts getting darker. It also, the color becomes more intense, so I've added more phthalo blue. This dark water again is going to make that windmill really stand out. Now this I'm mixing a little bit more phthalo blue plus just white, taking the ultramarine blue out of it so that that color becomes more intense. That's another way to give the appearance of depth in a painting is muted colors go back, brighter, more intense colors come forward. So This again is my ultramarine blue, little ultramarine blues mixed into the, or a little phthalo blue is mixed into my ultramarine blue mixture. And as I come closer to us, then this is my phthalo blue plus white.
again, this just, just makes the water appear to come forward. And I'll even add some turquoise blue as I get closer. We're go, going to go back in and work some of my distant blue color in, the, just to make that transition a little bit smoother, a little bit less distinct. I want to, that transition to be a little softer. I'm using my little smaller brush to come in here. Again, we're getting some mist and stuff as we come in here, so this water gets a little more muted. here where the sun really hits that. It's too bright. But I can just come back and pull over that a little bit. There we go. That's what I want. But you can see how that water, how that muted blue drops back. I'm going to make a mix here of just ultramarine blue plus white. A little bit darker than my far water, but not quite as dark as that dark. Make sure my dark brush is clean. The secret to nice clean color on your canvas is to have a clean brush. So I've Change. I'm changing color, so I clean my brush. And I just want to bring some of this ultramarine blue plus white into this area. Again, this is just going from the muted to the brighter color. I just wanted that a little less distinct. So I want that to drop back. I'm taking my bigger brush and I'm going to drag over that. Again, I want this to be clean. I can just hold it flat. You don't want to dig into that paint. You want to hold the brush flat and just drag it across. So you just get a nice, nice soft transitions there. That still is too distinct of a line. So I'm going to, come, going to come back with a little of my ultramarine blue plus the white. Just soften that a little bit. It's just a little too hard. Now these are some of the blues from the upper portion of the sky that are going. I'm going to start using for waves breaking against these rocks. too bright because I want, this is going to be white white so I don't want that to interfere. Then these are far away so they're not going to be bright bright anyway. Those breakers are coming in and breaking up against those rocks. That's, I'm going to have also have a little mist here before we go. Let me. I want to just break that hard edge. Just let a little mist come up from the ocean. Soften that bottom of this right here. Again, I'm just pulling some of the lighter color over the rock color. It looks like that mist is just breaking up in there. 
All right. Thank you for watching my YouTube video. Please subscribe to my channel. I also have a blog where I show the complete step-by-step -step process as I paint. And the link is in the description below. It's also on the final frame of this video. You have a wonderful, wonderful day, and thank you again for visiting our studio.